Hi guys and dolls, today I'm doing a tutorial that is inspired by the character Joan on the TV show Mad Men. If you haven't ever seen it, I highly recommend it. It's kind of a feast for the eyes. It's all 60s fashion and hair and makeup and home decor and gosh, things were so different back then. There's, uh, you know, a lot of um, unveiled sexism and um, sexual harassment in the workplace. It's dealt with in a non-politically correct way, which I think is really, in some ways, important storytelling because a lot of, you know, negative things get kind of swept under the rug. Joan is one of my absolute favorite characters. She is fantastic. But, like, as soon as I saw her, I was like, <gasps> She's pretty. <laughs> I know that's really superficial, but anyway, I, I love Christina Hendricks. I think she is so beautiful. It's just not even funny. She's like my style icon because she really knows how to dress her body. She looks fantastic in the costumes they put her in in Mad Men. Oh, fabulous. Anyway, let's go ahead and get on with this tutorial. Essentially, this is a wonderfully wearable pinup kind of makeup, very 1960s inspired, you know, you get the heavy lashes and all that good stuff. Uh, if you would like to see a full list of products of everything that I use, because there's a few things I couldn't show, like my skincare and foundation and stuff like that, go ahead and check out um, my link to my blog in the down bar, and that's it. Let's go ahead and get started. For eyes, I'm going to start out with Urban Decay Primer Potion. Um, but any anything can be substituted, of course. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take the colors from this. This is 1116R from Inglot. I'm going to take this darker color here at the bottom. This color is a few shades darker than my natural skin tone, and it has a slightly pink tone to it. So it's perfect to kind of create the illusion of a deeper crease than what I've really got. So we're going to rock that in our entire socket line. Just follow the ball of your eye. Just trying to create the illusion of a, very, of a very slight shadow. You might be able to tell the difference between the two. Where this one just looks like it's a slight little bit pushed back because I have slightly hooded lids. Now if you have a deeper crease already then you can just skip this step. You lucky lucky bastard. What movie is that from? You lucky lucky bastard. I don't know. The next thing we want to do is highlight underneath our brows. I'm going to use the lightest shade from that same one, kind of keeping it in the same color family. And just pick some of that up on a flat shader brush like this and go right underneath the brow. So we're pretty much done with this palette. So you can go ahead and pack it up and put it to bed for the night. So now we're going to go into the Naked 2 palette. Very excited. This is, ooh, ouch. I think this is the first time I've used this in a tutorial. I'm going to take Tease. Perfect name for Joan. Take that again on our fluffy crease brush, same one we've been using when it's a 226 by MAC. Uh, and then I'm going to also put this in my crease, but I'm not going to bring it in all the way like we did with the other color. We're really just going to concentrate this on like the outer half. Just to create a little extra depth. And then once you have the majority of the color placed, then you can kind of come through just to blend it all together. So you don't have like this like weird banged off like I have dark colors in my outer lid crease area thing going on. That would be not very good. I find that sometimes that I'm doing this it helps if I kind of look surprised to sort of see where I'd like to draw in my deeper crease. So if it helps you to look surprised. Lately in this season, I've noticed her doing the cat eye thing more often, which I almost did for her, but I feel like this is more classic Joan. She's also sort of experimental. Sometimes she'll do like blue eyeshadow or light green eyeshadow, sort of like pink, pinky peachy toned. But I just kind of wanted to do like her classic office look, and this is kind of what I think of when I think of her makeup. What do you call this kind of like a vanilla sort of color? I would describe it. Sure. Grabbing that on a flat brush and I'm going to pack that on the lower lid. I'm going to grab a little bit of Foxy with it too just because Foxy has a lot more color payoff and also because we don't want it to be overly shimmery like in the 60s. Uh, I mean there was frosty eyeshadows for sure but I've just maybe this is just what I've noticed on the show they don't wear too many actual like super frosty shadows. It's sort of like satin and matte. Please, if you are like a, a 60s makeup aficionado, uh, please let me know, you know, in terms of textures, what was really big, like what was worn. But so far I've, I've not noticed too many frost or pearl toned or like sh finished eyeshadows. 
using a Milani iTech Extreme. So this is a felt tip marker style uh, eyeliner thing. This is a little bit longer than a lot of the other ones that are on the market though. Starting right there at the inner corner. I'm just sort of tracing along my lash line. So when it comes to this outer corner, I'm going to draw and drag in rather than come out because that's when you can get a more like elongated cat eye. And we don't want it too uh, elongated for this. I'm going to come back over and make it a little bit thicker in the center to really round out the eye. Make it appear bigger and rounder. So that's our eyeliner. I'm going to give it a little flick at the end. But notice I didn't take it all the way down here. I kind of went out from just before the inner corner. I sort of went out from there. And that kind of gives the eye a little bit of lift. Kind of helps my eye shape. It's especially good for, you know, eyes that tend to kind of come down a little bit at the bottom. Like if you have like what they call bedroom eyes where they sort of are shaped to come down a little bit. When you do a wing, sometimes it ends up looking really curved up if you go all the way down. So if you stop a tick before the end, a tick, like that's a measurement. If you stop a bit before the end of your actual lash line, you can kind of get a little bit more of an upswept look from your wings. All right, I'm going to line my lower lash line with a pencil, but I'm going to use a brush to get it on. And I'm just going to run this right along the, uh, basically just right along my lash line, but without taking it down too much, without bringing it all the way in. It always seems like her eyelashes are just a little thicker on the bottom, and I think that's eyeliner. Next thing I'm going to do is take a champagne pink, you know, skin tone fleshy shade and uh, line out my inner rim on the bottom. Alright, this next tip is really, really helpful if you have light colored eyelashes and you don't want to uh, color in like your uh, inner rim on the upper side, especially if you are putting a light colored eyeliner in your lower rim. Uh, use your liquid liner and use a flat brush like this. This is a MAC 212. This is my favorite brush for doing this. Get some of that liner on that brush and because this is sort of a flat, you know, thin brush, you can go basically deeper into your lash line than you can with just the liquid liner alone without making a big old mess. And that way you get as close to the root as possible and you can even, you know, paint a little bit down onto the lashes a bit. If you have lighter eyelashes, this is a great option rather than gooping it up with you know, product or something on the inside that's going to transfer and kind of give you that raccoony look. Not very dry. I have a video on how to apply false lashes, uh, you know, from several years ago when I used to use a different method where I would actually paint it on my own lashes. I don't do that anymore just because I just found it easier to do it the more traditional way when you put the glue on the band. There's like a little lip where your eyelid and your lash line meets, and that's really where you want the band to be. Not quite on the lashes and not quite on your eyelid. Now for my contour today, I'm going to use my favorite one to use on fairer people, which is Strata from MAC. It's just sort of like a pinky shadow tone. Um, good for contouring and things of the like. So I have this on sort of an egg-shaped brush, uh, doing a little bit of light contouring through the backside of my cheekbone. A little bit down here. The five second diet plan, kids. Learn it, live it, love it. When it comes to blush, Joan always has beautiful blush on. I'm going to go ahead and start with Tickled Pink from e.l.f. and see what that does for me. Using that same brush, and I sort of back combed it onto this because it's not the most pigmented blush. And then apply that to the back side of the apples of my cheeks. that's pretty on its own. We are almost done. I um, finished doing my brows and stuff off camera because my camera was overheating. Uh, so I took that opportunity to do my hair. Now I know a lot of you would like to see, you know, how I did my hair, how it looks from the back. 
The truth is not very good because I have a short bob so it's sort of helped, held together with lots of hairspray and about half a pack of bobby pins so it's not attractive looking from the back. I'll give you guys a quick 360 because I'm sure you guys are still curious but as you can see it only looks good from the front. I'm going to use Max Prep and Prime Lip on the lips. Joan wears a lot of like warm pinks, corals, things like that, so I'm going to use a coral lip liner. This is Lasting Sensation from MAC. Line and fill with that bad boy. My next lip thing, I'm going to, lip thing, I'm going to use a uh, Revlon lip butter in Cherry Tart. And this is a very Joan lippy, um, sort of very, very coral. I do want to kind of bring it just a little bit more pink, so I'm going to take, I forget the name of the of this color. It's one of the Wet n Wild lipsticks that doesn't have the name on it, but it's 905D. And again, I will have a full list of products and everything on my blog, so yeah. And this just gives it a little bit, just, it makes it slightly more pink and a little bit more opaque. Hot lipstick on the teeth. So these right here are our final touch, a pair of vintage earrings that I've had for a number of years. They're a gold with some detailing and some green enamel and things like that. And that concludes my Joan Mad Men pinup inspired tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and pull my the neck of my blouse down a little bit because, you know, Joan always likes to have lots of her décolleté showing. Very Joan-esque now, yeah. I hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I most certainly enjoyed it. Mad Men is one of my all-time favorite TV shows. I just, it, or series rather, rather. It's fan-freaking-tastic. There are so many characters that you hate and that you still love them. Like Dawn, completely hateable, completely relatable, completely lovable, <laughs> uh, frustrating. I could go on and on. Joan is... Oh god, I love Joan. I love Joan. I love Joan. Make sure to let me know in the down bar section thingy if you want to see more Mad Men inspired makeup tutorials. Some of the other characters. I really want to do one for Peggy, but I mean, she doesn't really wear makeup, but I could probably figure something out. Anyway, have a fantastic day and I'll see you guys in my next video. Just be yourself. See you. Bye.